in front of your screen as a force so powerful, so intense, it could swallow entire stars in seconds. Now, what if we could turn that same force into an endless power supply for humanity? A black hole the size of a grain of sand could power our entire planet for thousands of years, and that's not even the craziest part. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how we might actually harvest this power, why some scientists think this could be real within a few centuries, and the mind-blowing reason why smaller black holes are actually more powerful than the massive ones at the centers of galaxies. Back in 1974, Stephen Hawking made a discovery that changed everything we thought we knew about black holes. He found out they weren't just cosmic dead ends, they were leaking energy into space. They're constantly spitting out particles of energy. We call it Hawking radiation. But here's where it gets wild. Picture yourself holding two hot cups of coffee, one large, one small. Which one cools down faster? The small one, right? Black holes work the same way. The tiny ones are like cosmic espresso shots, blasting out energy at an incredible rate. You know how your phone battery might be at 100% charge, but you only get to use about 70% of that energy. Well, our best nuclear power plants are even worse. They only use 3% of their potential energy. The sun itself, even worse, less than 1%. But a black hole, it would turn about 90% of its mass straight into pure energy. No waste, no leftovers, just raw power. Remember that supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy? The one that's 4 million times heavier than our sun? Well, it would make a terrible power plant. It's like trying to heat your house with a volcano. Way too much power, impossible to control. What we need is something smaller, much smaller. Imagine you're making coffee, too big a pot and it'll take forever to heat up, too small and it'll boil over instantly. Black holes are exactly the same. We need one that's just right. Picture a black hole about as heavy as Mount Everest, but compressed to the size of something way smaller than your coffee cup. That's our sweet spot. Any bigger and it wouldn't give us enough energy to be worth the trouble. Any smaller and it would explode with the force of a million nuclear bombs before we could even start using it. Scientists have actually calculated this. They found that a black hole power plant would need to weigh about as much as a small mountain, around a billion tons. But here's the mind-bending part. All that mass would be squeezed into something smaller than a grain of sand. The fun part is trying to harness its power without getting destroyed. Let me tell you about a day in the life of our theoretical black hole power plant operator. First problem of the morning, your power source is hot. Not forget your coffee in the microwave hot. We're talking surface of the sun looks like a freezer in comparison hot. The energy coming off this thing would vaporize any known material in the universe. But wait, it gets better. Your power plant's tiny black hole is floating in the middle of your containment chamber, spewing out radiation in every direction. You can't let it touch anything, not the walls, not the floor, nothing. And remember how I said smaller black holes release more energy? Well, they also evaporate faster. Leave your black hole unattended during lunch break and you might come back to find it's either disappeared completely or grown too big to control. Here's how our cosmic power plant would work. The black hole sits in the center. When it releases energy, our mirrors catch it and bounce it exactly where we want it to go. But we're not done being clever yet. Remember those particles I mentioned earlier that the black hole spits out? Some scientists figured out we could use them to feed the black hole and keep it stable. It's like a cosmic recycling system. The black hole gives us energy, we give some back to keep it happy, and everyone wins. The really wild part, we already use something similar in our particle accelerators. They're like mini practice runs for what we need in a black hole power plant. Sure, they're about a million times less powerful than what we need, but hey, you've got to start somewhere, right? Remember when we thought phones would always be connected to the wall? Well, imagine telling someone from 1950 about your smartphone. That's where we are with black hole power plants. 
We're still at the phones connected to wall stage, but we can see where this is going. Let's say it's the year 2250. Floating in space about a million miles from Earth is what looks like a giant silver flower. That's our first black hole power station. Why in space? Well, would you want a black hole in downtown Manhattan? That's like keeping a pet dragon in your apartment. Technically possible, but probably not the best idea. The station looks like a flower because it's actually a massive array of solar panels, except they're not collecting sunlight. They're catching energy from our tiny pet black hole floating in the center. And here's the really cool part. These panels beam the energy back to Earth using the same basic technology we use today for satellite TV. Your great-great-grandkids might get their electricity from a black hole millions of miles away, just like you get your favorite shows from a satellite. But some scientists are thinking even bigger, way bigger. Remember the Dyson Sphere concept, those hypothetical megastructures that could surround an entire star. Well, some are suggesting we could build many versions around artificial black holes. It's like building a power plant the size of Earth's orbit, but around something smaller than your house. If we pull this off, we're not just talking about powering cities or countries. We're talking about powering entire civilizations. One black hole power station could provide more energy than humanity has used in its entire history. What do you think? Are black hole power plants humanity's next great leap, or should some forces of nature stay untamed? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.